Hey all, my name is Matthew Lee and I am a filmmaker out of Vancouver, Canada. I do directing, cinematography, editing, color grading, and a whole bunch of other things that uh, are not as sexy. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through this camera rig of mine. This is my personal rig that I use for music video production and short films. Also, I've shot a couple of uh, independent feature films on this camera. Um, one thing I'm going to do today with this is break down the hows and the whys of the rig and um, talk about how I like to operate. Now, I'm not going to go into the camera so much or the lenses so much, but I will go into just the mechanics of this rig. And the hope is that anything I tell you here, you can think about and possibly apply to any kind of work you like to do, assuming you shoot in the same kind of way that I do or I enjoy. Now, I'm going to start by saying that I am not a gimbal person or a glide cam person or a drone person or a underwater camera operator or anything like that. I like to shoot primarily uh, either shoulder mounted on sticks, on a slider or, or on a dolly track. I don't like being freeform with um, my camera operating. Saying that, this rig is set up for me and my own uh, requirements as opposed to the requirements of another operator who have, may have a different uh, shooting style than I do. So let's start. Um, what we have here is a camera, the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro in this case. Um, and it is sitting inside of a Tilta cage with a Tilta top handle, a Tilta EVF extension arm, and I guess the Tilta mounting plate. Um, on top of that, oh sorry, there's also a Tilta Mini Follow Focus and a Tilta Nucleus Nano. Now I know that's a lot of Tilta gear and that was not my intention necessarily. Um, it just sort of happened uh, to work out that way with a lot of the equipment. The only thing that Tilta really made that I was super, super excited about was the EVF extension arm. Because the way I like to operate is I like to be biased to one side of the camera or the other and be able to look through the viewfinder um, while I'm shooting, especially in bright sunlight or days where there's just too much reflection to be able to see the back of the camera and the screen on there or any field monitor that you may have attached to a, your own camera. Um, in addition to that tilt -a stuff uh, rigging, we have a Polar Pro map box at the front here on the first generation, um, about two stage ones. We have small rig uh, handles, small rig rails, a small rig V-mount battery plate, a nice rig um, shoulder pad, and I'm equipped here with also a um, ZG Cine V-mount and a Hollyland 300 uh, HDMI wireless transmitter, Rode VideoMic Pro, and I forgot to say that there is also a Tilta SSD holder back here. Um, so that's more or less the rig. Uh, aside from, of course, the camera and the lens. So let's go into this and figure out why I built it the way I did. Now, first things first, I like to operate on tripod, like I said before. Now, I like to have two points of, um, of connection to the camera, and that's why I keep the handles on the rig on the tripod like this. So I can have one tight grip on one handle, another tight grip back here, and I can easily line up a shot looking at the uh, monitor at the back or peek into the EVF uh, on this side of the camera. Another way to operate is um, taking your hand and sticking it on the grip. Now the Blackmagic camera has a grip on the side, which is pretty cool. I know some red models do as well. Or in, if you think about doing this or are interested in doing this, I think you can just buy a handle that sticks onto a cage. And the reason why I like to do this is I like to hold one handle um, like this, hold this handle here, stick my shoulder up against the battery, and then it just gives me more fine control, staying loose and being able to track the subject um, with just a bit more precision than if I'm just following like this. Both methods of operation, both good, depending upon how you like to operate and what's required in the shot you need to track for. Now, another way I like to operate is by holding the rear handle and holding the manual focus, if I'm going to be the one focusing on the day. And that allows me to operate in both things simultaneously 
and be able to focus for the subject and do any kind of focus pulls or focus adjustment I need to do while a shot's happening or in progress. If I have a first assistant camera operator or focus puller, that's when I can just take the tilt and nucleus nano that's currently just not on the gear. I can detach the mini, I can slip the nano down on there, and with the wireless transmitter, the uh, first assistant camera operator can just pick up what is this unit, and then they can be adjusting focus all day for me, which is ideal, especially if you just want to be able to concentrate on one type of operating. The coolest thing I think about this camera rig is its nimbleness. Now, what I like to do often is shoulder operate. So I can quickly loosen the camera off its tripod head, press the release, and I can be operating shoulder mounted effectively immediately. So I can crouch down, I can be getting high shots, low shots, I can be following actors on my feet and working two points of operation if I need to focus for myself, holding both handles if I have a first AC, and it just allows me the freedom of movement. We can just move the sticks to the side or wherever they need to go, and if the camera does have to fall back onto the sticks, I can just take the whole rig, slide it back up onto the plate, and lock it down. And it's set again. And then I can begin operating as usual quite quickly. What I found is the more nimble you can be on a set, the quicker you can move from one type of shooting to another, the better. Um, and it just saves time. Anytime you've got to repurpose the camera, you've got to adjust things on the rig to pick up a certain shot, is honestly going to be time taken away from you know, the shooting day. But it's also just going to, to be the thing that, that's going to make you kind of groan. It's like, oh, I've got to take the camera off the tripod and I've got to get this shot and that's going to take me five minutes to do that. Or I've got to, you know, I've got to take one of the focus mo uh, motors off because now I've got to first AC who is willing to focus for me for this particular shot. Or I've got to assemble it or I've got to add it or I've got to do something like that. The more stuff that's on the camera, the better. Um, and that way you can just click it in, click it off as needed, as opposed to constantly rearranging the camera layout to accommodate different circumstances in your day. Now, one thing about this camera rig that I like is I don't use any Velcro, any kind of sloppy connections. Everything on this rig is hard points. Um, I just recently got this little small rig um, monitor bracket here for the HDMI, uh, wireless HDMI. And what I like about it is it's basically tightened off. As soon as it's on there, it really can't move. There's nothing really jingling or jangling uh, short of the microphone. It's all a very rigid system. And I like the rigidity of it. It just means that it's stable. Also, there's nothing really being picked up um, on microphones. Um, of, of just the operating the camera from one position to another. It's effectively completely rigid. When things jingle and jangle around, I just don't like it. I'd also constantly worry that if I'm moving the camera too much, something is just going to fall off. And it's much, I find it much, much uh, more secure to just keep everything tightened down with screws or, or connections, however, as opposed to something that can just kind of loosen or fall off. Also, I just don't like having the the resin of the glue attached to the camera um, from, from Velcro points. You know, we have cages for a reason. These cages have all these kind of holes in them that allow for hard points to be established. And if you can, use them because they're there to be used. They're there to screw equipment onto the camera and keep your rig as tight as possible. Now I once did a shoot with an Area Alexa Classic and we parked the vehicle and walked about a kilometer across a field to lay the camera down into position. Now the issue with a heavy camera like the uh, Area Classic is that everything in the system has to be heavier to accommodate the weight of the camera. And you're talking about the camera, you're talking about the, uh, what would have been the fluid head, the sticks, any kind of dolly or slider for it, it's all in excess of weight. And what I did and what I've what I designed 
was to have a camera that can be extremely nimble. Now, what I normally do when I grab up the, or want to pick up the camera from one position to another is I will detach the camera from the fluid head tripod, sit it on the ground, and I can do that because it's got handles front and then it's got the shoulder mount on the back. The camera just kind of sits on an angle and it won't tip over unless somebody kicks it, which you don't want to do to any kind of camera anyways. Um, and then I'll just move the tripod, then I'll grab the camera and slide it back onto the, onto the tripod head. Uh, makes for easy movement, a lot of, uh, heck of a lot safer, and you know, it just stops you from damaging equipment. Also, if you want to raise up the tripod or lower the tripod, it's probably more safe to just pull the camera off of it, do the adjustment with the tripod, slide the camera back onto it. If you're operating with just yourself as a single operator or a one-man band, um, to that end of being a one-man band, everything in this rig is designed to be as light as possible, but while still being heavy enough to get really stabilized shots. So I'll give you a quick for instance is, I can lift this entire rig up with just two, hand, two hands like this. The slider actually gives you a really good opportunity to get, to get a grip on it. Um, so I have no problem, I can even just hold it from the top handle, as long as the legs are short enough, and I can walk the entire rig over to where I where I want to be. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that constantly, but it is something you can do, and it does help you be more nimble with the camera. I did another video where, a music video, where we were shooting on a pretty large camera system, and it took four guys to move the entire rig up a set of stairs. And at the end of the day, we only got about two thirds of the photography I wanted. And a lot of that just had to do with the camera needing to be moved with so many people, taking so much time. Whereas in a circumstance like this, I could walk this entire rig up to a flight of stairs, drop it down and begin shooting again in less than a few minutes. And it would only just be me and the other guys could be or the other crew could just be working on lighting or they could be working on grabbing a new lens or you know, uh, doing what any other job they need to be doing. And uh, just the idea of saving time while shooting is more valuable to me than worrying about is my camera big enough for this shoot? Does it look impressive enough for I don't know who because the viewer who sees your video doesn't see the camera. You're the one who sees the camera on the day. No one cares about the size of the camera. No one cares even about the sensor size of the camera. All the audience is doing is they're seeing the video you shot. And ideally, in your shooting day, you're just getting the best footage you can and the most footage you can, as opposed to being concerned, is my camera cool looking enough? Is it big enough? And that's a big trap. Like I've fallen into that trap. I've spent a lot of money on stuff that I probably didn't need just to kind of build out a camera that looked kind of neat. And really, you know, a lot of it's a waste of time. Just figure out how you like to operate, figure out your needs. And a lot of that just comes from experience on set. And the more experience you have shooting anything, the more you realize what you require as a camera operator or cinematographer, and you can bend everything you need towards that. Why do I like to have a slider on the camera? Well, one of the major reasons is I'd like to be able to get slider shots. Surprise, surprise. So what the slider allows you to do, of course, is be able to, to operate and move the camera um, across a scene or that's a little tight. Um, we'll move in close for close up or just do subtle moves over your subject, um, whatever it is. Now, another handy thing about having a slider is if you have, if you don't have the space to position the camera and, and you're, if you didn't have the slider, you position the camera down and you were stuck for space and you couldn't move, like you couldn't move the tripod forward or back, backward, the slider allows you to just simply move the camera to a better position or a more, more necessary position for your film. So if you can at least place the tripod here, you now, this slider gives you about another foot on either side where you can actually place the camera. I had this happen two nights ago when I was filming a project 
and there was just enough space for the tripod and to get the proper shot that we wanted we just dropped the camera back physically and then we were able to get the shot other than if I didn't have that, I couldn't, like there was no room to put the tripod here um, because there was all kinds of office equipment and, and restaurant equipment and, and whatever there. So I, I was able to at least carve out a little bit of space here and just slide the, slide the camera back and then get the shot going that way. Really handy. I've used it all the time. It's great for product photography or videos when you're like over top of a table, for instance, and the table's here, and yet the camera needs to be closer to it. Um, it just works out really well to be able to be a bit more nimble and it also frees you up to do all kinds of different types of shots that you otherwise just can't get if the camera is fixed in one place. Now you really can't see them in this video, but this is an iFootage um, Gazelle T7. Um, doesn't really matter. But what uh, this tripod does have is click um, legs as opposed to twist legs. Now I prefer click legs mostly because it's basically they're on or off. There's no in between. And once they're on, you know that that leg's not gonna move. If the twist is there, you're constantly turning it to see just when it's tight enough. And I just don't like that kind of of kind of loose or sloppy input. I'd rather just be on or off. It's also better if you're a single operator because you can click the leg out. You can just have it fall or you can press the camera or the tripod down against the ground and have it kind of um, just flow back up into the, into the tripod body. And that way you can be more deliberate about your choices. Um, and deliberate about your actions while using a tripod like this. I find it is just it's a lifesaver, especially as a single operator when you're trying to do everything with, on the camera yourself. Now in this configuration, I put the video mic up top and the reason for that is mostly just line of sight over the flag of the map box. Um, I prefer it that way. I have the Holly lamp on this side um, of, the, of the unit in, instead of here and that's mostly just because of the EVF. If this was here, if the Holly Land was here, you know, my face couldn't necessarily get into where the EVF is, so I couldn't really be see, seeing what I'm shooting. So just by virtue of having it there, I can get my face in there. Um, another thing with when you're designing a camera rig is it's really important to understand your space. Now, some of this is just happenstance and, and uh, lucky kind of situations, but the map box here never collides with the arm. I can bring this back to the shortest lens I have and it just doesn't, doesn't collide with the metal either on the handle or of the armature here. These uh, handles here, they do collide with the map box, but they're always behind the map box no matter what. And I think that they basically stay exactly where they are. Now these handles, they can come up and down because they will collide with the, um, with the slider once in a while, depending upon what you're doing. If you're going for a low shot I can show you, it will collide. But you know, they're easy enough to just un or loosen and twist out. And then you just have more freedom down that way, as opposed to you know, being locked into a single position. I do have dog bones as well, the, the extension arms for the uh, handles, but I don't use them. I find just the smaller steps with the least amount of turning and twisting and adjustment suits me and my shooting style better. It could be that I would like to use them uh, if possibly the weight of the camera becomes a problem um, on a shooting day, but I've used this for four to five hours doing a shoot at a nightclub uh, for DJ performance and the camera was never an issue and I was down on my knees, down uh, crouching, shooting up high and so on and so forth and I could was comfortably using this rig all day and a lot of that is just due to the weight like that's why the battery is back here that's why the shoulder mounts here that's why you know the map box of course is up front um, it just disperses the weight across the entire um, unit and it can rest on my shoulder back here and I'm never tired um, I don't ever have back pain or anything while using this sort of a sort of a rig was if I was using a gimbal you know it's all front heavy uh, I would find that just probably intolerable over a couple of hours. So um, this sort of situation works really well for me and the sort of photography I like to do. 
Now, I don't want you to come away from this video thinking about all the money you need to spend. I think if you want to get into getting camera equipment, you want to kind of begin your life as a filmmaker, cinematographer, or what have you, um, the best thing to do is just start with a camera that, uh, you know, you, you seem to enjoy because every camera is different. All of them have different UIs, different body layouts, different ways of, of operating them. So finding the camera that suits you is important um, at first and foremost. And then think about after you've, you've used it a little bit, how you would like to accentuate it for your own purposes. Don't let somebody tell you this is how it's got to be because this isn't how it's got to be. There's problems with this rig. Cable management isn't great. I could get that fixed. I don't like the length of this plate. That could probably be fixed. Um, I Like I said, I just got this small rig thing. Um, this hauling line used to be up here and the, and the cable was colliding with it. Stuff you learn from, right? You have to be able to have some experience shooting projects to figure out how best you like to operate and how comfortable you are operating camera. When I first started in cinematography, I was concerned about pulling focus manually. I thought it was overwhelming and I wanted to use autofocus. And thank God I never did. I just wanted to, I just I learned how to pull focus manually. And, and as soon as you get a pretty good fall of focus, when you're comfortable with, with a manual lens that's geared, um, it actually becomes second nature. It's like playing a video game. You know, the first couple of times you play the game, you're not so good. After a little while, you're, you're, you know, you're doing really well and you're able to hit things, you know, just by, by feel more than any kind of, you know, mechanical mathematics or, or um, any kind of laborious design. You're just kind of doing it by feel and you're getting the feedback on the screen, whether something's in focus or not. So think about what it is you want to do and how you like to operate. And then when you are interested in maybe expanding your camera with a cage, you know, why are you getting a cage? What pieces do you want to fit onto that cage? Is it a field monitor? Is it a microphone? Do you, do you want to get a follow focus? Do you need both rails for the follow focus? Um, you know, do you want a side handle if your camera doesn't have a side handle on it? What is it you want to do? And also, like how long does the battery last in your camera? I use a V-mount on this because the batteries for these cameras only last about 20, 30 minutes, and these are last four hours, and I don't even have to think about it. Um, the SSD for recording on, you know, I don't like in-monitor recorders. They kind of freak me out. So I'd much rather have, you know, either the cards for the camera or a lower cost option. In this case, I far prefer the lower cost option because guess what? It's lower cost. I don't have to spend $300 on a CFAST card or whatever with their, their whole 30 minutes of footage when I could spend $150 on one of these and hold two hours of footage. So that's just concessions and things like that I do while operating. There's a cost effectiveness to certain decisions you're going to make. And those decisions are really important, um, especially if you're on a budget and when you're starting out. I've spent and wasted a lot of money buying a lot of equipment that I never really needed. And I want to save anyone from that. And one of the worst things you can do is go to YouTube, watch someone's channel, and have them give you very specific advice about what you should buy. Because I've done that, and I've wasted a lot of money. I got a tripod that two people needed to operate. Um, and it was completely useless to me. It also weighed like 15 pounds. And who wants to walk that around? I used to run with a field monitor on the rig, and I don't anymore because I find this monitor here is as good as any field monitor. Plus, I can control the camera from back here. A lot of 6K rigs you see have the battery placed right up against the screen. I'm like, why do you want to do that? This is one of the most important things and ways to control your camera. You should be able to see what it is you're shooting from the monitor built into the camera and, and, and uh, just kind of use that instead. And I, I find this is better than any field monitor I can get, and it's large enough. And if I do need something, or I do need someone to, to focus for, like I said, this used to be my field monitor. But this, it's not running right now, but this is what I can hand somebody. I can hand the director uh, the unit. I can hand the first AC the unit. I can hand anyone on set that piece of equipment, and they can be seeing what I'm seeing.
And this is good enough and the EVF is good enough. I don't need a redundancy of a yet another screen on this camera. And it, what it does too is it keeps the camera lighter because that screen requires, it's the weight of the screen and the weight of its battery and the weight of whatever it is that's holding it up. And once again, it'll be higher, it'll flop around. I don't want things to flop around. Especially when I'm shoulder mounted, I'm looking through the EVF, what do I need another monitor for? Other than it's just really heavy. So I'm just trying to save you from making decisions about equipment you feel you need to buy if you don't know how you like to operate. And the only way I think you're gonna know how you like to operate is simply by starting somewhere with the least amount of equipment you have and going forward and shooting something, anything you know, that, that interests you and getting a good feel for how you like to work. Over the summer of 2022, I shot a, um, two videos with the camera that's shooting me, and that's like the Lumix GH5. And all I did was take the body and a lens. That's all I took. And then I just learned how to move and get shots I wanted and follow focus just on the barrel um, for those projects. And it actually was really quite liberating. I could walk around, zoom lens, on that camera, no one knew that I was shooting video. I was able to go places and get shots that I otherwise couldn't if I was walking around with a rig like this. So if I were to travel, and I have, that's the sort of equipment I would take with me. I wouldn't take this. This is for being in on set or being out on the street or in a park or something like that, getting a particular shot. This isn't my run and gun setup, even though I can run and gun with this. And it's kind of designed to be able to do that. but there's a time and place to use this and there's a time and place to use that. Um, and really that as a camera is pretty much just as good as this. It gets incredible imagery. And if you were to watch any of the videos on my uh, other YouTube channel um, of films I've made, you'd be surprised at how much was shot on that and how little so far has been shot on this. The camera, as long as it's you know relatively contemporary, even in the last five years, is going to serve you incredibly well, as long as you're dedicated to using it, using it and dedicating to learn with it. My advice is really, you know, as, as cool as a rig may look, and, and you can find all kinds of rigs on Instagram that, that blow your mind of how just crazy they are. That's not what you need to make a movie. What you need to make a movie is, you know, a camera, a lens, and a place to stand. That's really what you need.